What is your money story? And by that I mean, how did you come to form your relationship about money, finances, credit, and investing? Now, I have a little insight on that. You had it developed or instilled in you by two different means. One, your parents, or the lack of parents, and one of an environment. Let's take all of these guys who will be entering the NFL draft come, I think March or May, whenever it happens. You're gonna have guys who come from a very impoverished background who will become instant millionaires. The first round and some of the guys in the second round. Maybe even the third, I'm not even sure. But the point is, you will have people who are unaccustomed to having money, who will have a lot of money, and they'll have it real quick. Based upon their money story, it's gonna either grow <laughs> or it's gonna get smaller. You ever notice how some football players, baseball players, NBA players, they never go broke. And some you can tell from the first paycheck they get and what they do with it. This is part of your money story. If you come into a large sum of money and there is no one in your immediate family or in the circle of people that you trust, you have no idea what to do with it. Let me give you an example of my changing money story. My mother was really bad with money, like atrociously bad. So that was one of the reasons that I wanted to make more money and have more things because we didn't have any money. I did the opposite of what she did thinking that was good enough, but it really was only part of the equation. So my money story was created in an environment of lack, going back to starting companies so I can get stuff wholesale because we didn't have the money to buy them full retail price, which actually worked out very well for me. Depending upon your family structure, and if you have the ability to have people who have money, who have means, to be close to them at an early age. You're not gonna have any clue to who to trust. I mean, I want you to really think about it. You're 19, you're 20, you're 21 years old. You just signed this check, and within a few days, there's millions of dollars in your bank account. And for the last two to four years, you've been living not an impoverished lifestyle if you're at one of the top tier programs, but not one in roaring abundance. What are you gonna do? I remember my first big check. I went out and I bought a brand new BMW. I paid cash for it. Yet I couldn't afford that car. I didn't understand what you can and what you can't afford. I emptied out my bank account. The car was 55,000. I had $56,000 in the bank. Road check, drove off. I spent all of the money that I had in the world. I look back at that time and I was like, what were you thinking? There's no way I can do it. I can tell you, I could have $350,000 cash money in the bank and I still would not do what I did back then. I would need to have way more to feel comfortable because as I changed my money story, I got accustomed to having money. See, I was still in that lack environment and I still had a lot of repressed and pent up wants. So when I finally got some money to get what I want, that's what I went out and did but I didn't have enough money to pay my taxes, which created a problem. And I had to make more money, and I ended up the year driving a very nice car, living in a rented place with ramen noodles and spaghetti in my refrigerator. I had a nice car, I had an okay place to live, but I had no cash money. Now from outside appearances, I looked like I was on top of the world, but I wasn't. When you are developing your money story, this is something that's gonna to happen to you during the formative years of three to 10. This is when it's gonna be developed. This is an inheritance from your parents. It's not an active, or it could be active. You could have a father who's like, look, you need to save your money. And that's an active money story, but often with parents who are very economical, very thrifty, really good at saving money, they develop a beggar's mentality. They'll have money, but they're afraid to spend it, they're afraid to use it, and they will still have these cheap 
pathologies into old age. When I was living in the boarding house, a house around the corner caught fire. The guy owned the house, and when the house, the fire people were there, they noticed something very strange. It was $650,000 cash money all up in the attic. Fortunately, they put out the fire before that money burnt up. And the story became out really big because the guy was in a home and they talked to his girlfriend. He had been in a relationship with this woman for 15 years. They never went out to eat. She remembered, it's like, I remember he would come over to my place for a free meal. And she's like, it, it leaves me feeling some kind of way to know he had that kind of money. We never did anything. It wasn't like I wanted the top choice of this or that, but it would have been nice to go out. That is pathologically cheap. And he died and the money went to the state. Border or boundary of being thrifty, being practical and being living your best life. There is some wiggle room in here. Uh, typically, I take 10% of my income and I blow it any way that I want to and I don't think twice about it. Because you could become pathologically cheap and at one point I was pathologically cheap. If it didn't come out of a storage unit, I didn't have any need for it. And remember my earlier videos about the clampets and how people would dress funny? These guys had thousands or tens of thousands of dollars in their pockets and they still look like a Barney Rubble a Mayberry reject. Part of living a wonderful, fulfilling life is not to be so good with money and the rest of your life is just trash. And this is what I've seen with many of these people. And there was one guy, we used to call him Snowball. He had a lot of money, he had property, and then his fortunes changed. He had to start selling stuff. Because he was pathologically cheap, he did not put money where he needed to be. Being pathologically cheap due to the money story that you get from your parents could also set you up to be broke because you will not spend money where it needs to be spent. And this isn't about going out and buying a new car or getting the latest and greatest. This is, and this is something else that I've seen, especially with the Amazon FBA crowd. Every time I put up some of my Facebook page or a question, I can tell who's pathologically cheap and I can see it. Now, here's the thing with being pathologically cheap. You're only gonna go so far in life because you will not spend money that you could spend in the proper places. Now, what is your money story? What have you done or been exposed to to create your money story? You may have a pathologically cheap money story. You may have a big spender money story. You may have a practical money management story. What is your money management story? Did you get it from your parents? Did you get it from your environment? One of the things that really, really helped me, I lived in Adamsville, Alabama, and literally walking distance from the house, there was this place called Simmons Machinery. They were developers. At the time, it was just this big, fancy building with Simmons Machinery on it and these earth movers, these big dump trucks. He had two helicopters. Then across the street from him was this place called Camel's Pharmacy. Um, I used to hang out in that pharmacy because the guy who owned it would take these big game trips. He would go up into the woods and mountains, shoot some animal and then have it stuffed. And he did this all of the time. And one of the things that he did as a pharmacist is he bought his store. He didn't rent a store. He bought his store. He got a mortgage on it. He paid it off. And that business, last time I went home, was still in business. So we're talking about 30 years. And I remember when they built it. So I had this over here, this guy who was thrifty in some areas, but he was splurged because I don't know if you know, it's a lot of money to go on these big game hunting trips, a lot of money. And it's even more money to have the animal situated and dressed and then take the animal to a taxidermist and have him stuff it. That's a lot of money. Uh, when we were in the storage auction business, I remember buying this unit and being pissed off. It had 10 deer heads, 10 point buck, a 14 buck, a 16 point buck. I didn't have any clue to what I had. He had stuffed squirrels, um, all kinds of stuffed animals, right? So me, 
this is when you could sell the stuff on eBay. I just put the 14 puck uh, point buck head on eBay for 99 cents opening bid. And I put, cause I knew the shipping was going to be steep. So I put a hundred bucks for shipping because I knew we were going to have to build a crate and all this other stuff. Cause this, but you could ship it by FedEx. I woke up the next morning. That sucker was up to $360. It went for $1,230, a dead deer head, but it had 18 points. And if you know anything about hunting, 10 pucks, 10 point bucks, 12 points, when you start getting to 12, 14, 15, you get, it gets rare. It gets very, very rare. So all of a sudden this unit that I was pissed that I bought because I was actually running someone up and I ended up with the unit for 350 bucks. And I was pissed because I saw some of the dead animals in there. I was like, man, what is this going to be? Little did I know. And this is how I learned about taxidermy and all this other stuff. What is your money story? Where did it come from? And what I want you to do is to go home or if you have the time now, take out a sheet of paper and ask yourself, where did your views about money originate? How did you come to think about money the way that you think about money? And if you think about it and you really start to explore your early development stages, you're going to nail it down because with my money story, which was rooted in lack, I had to evolve it. I had to write more chapters because it was still very limited. You know, don't get in financial trouble. Great. But how do you make money? How do you invest money? Where do you put money? That part of my money story did not exist, which is why I went out and spent $55,000 on a brand new car and emptied out my bank account like a fool. Don't do that. <laughs> if I had been smart, what I really should have did, because I had at that point was thinking about an LLC and then Jim hit me just with stuff. The better option would have been to go and lease that car in my corporate name and I wouldn't have spent all my money and I would have had a tax advantage. But this is something I know now. At the time, I had no clue. I was just like, I'm just driving my car. Now, once again, this is very, very important because in this draft, you're going to have people who are going to become instant millionaires and they're going to have people who are going to talk to them, tell them where to put their money in, tell them how to live and tell them how to be thrifty. And you're still going to have guys who are going to go broke because you can sit down, you can explain stuff to them and they'll nod their head because consciously they hear you, but subconsciously, and that's where that money story is. They're going to operate on that money story, even though practical advice is at their fingertips. They're going to try to save people. They're going to try to hook everybody up and they don't understand, even though, 10, 20, I think, I think, um, Johnny, not Johnny Manziel, but, uh, Mayfield, I think he got like 30 million and 21 guaranteed money or $21 million signing bonus, which I don't know anything about NFL tr contracts, but I do know how tax law works. And that's going to be, I mean, literally between his agent and taxes, he lost more than half that money. So I don't really know how they structure these payments because it would be better off to pay that out over time versus all at once. But once again, I don't know, but your money story is going to operate, not just how you handle money, but how you live your life and how you live your life is going to be whether you're happy, whether you get married, whether you get divorced, like right now, Jeff Bezos is getting divorced from his wife for 25 years. And then all the people are going like, oh, she's going to get half. I don't think so. If you really study Jeff Bezos, he's ruthless. And one of the reasons that he built Amazon for long-term doability is he ignored a lot of the advice in the push of Wall Street because he knew that stuff was great for short-term profits, but for long-term profitability, it wasn't really that good. So I would not be surprised if he and his soon to be ex-wife have some kind of contract or some kind of agreement, because I just don't think she's going to get half of Amazon. I know that there are people who are going crazy at the thought of this, but I don't think it's going to happen. I could be wrong. I'm not in their bed. I don't know what's going on, but just judging upon Jeff Bezos and his money story, because Jeff Bezos grandfather was the commissioner of the Atomic Energy Board, I believe. Now, 
That's some heavy duty stuff. And I'm quite sure granddad taught Jeff a lot of stuff. Even though he didn't grow up with a silver spoon in his mouth, he grew up with access because with me, Simmons machinery, one day I'm walking by and the pilot of the helicopter takes me up over at Adamsville. And these things came to me during my formative years and they're very impactful. And many things that happened to you that formed your money story, you are totally unaware and oblivious to it, yet this is creating the lack of money, the hoarding of money in your life because how you view money. Some people view money as power. Some people view money as success. Some people view money as the, all, the be all be all when really money's just a tool. That's all it is, it's a tool. And you're gonna get the most bang for the buck with the intellect that is behind the money. So go ahead, recall some memories, throw it off in the comments. What is your money story? And I'll see you guys in the next video. And hold on, <laughs> I have some other stuff for you that will start right now. Hey, what's going on? Just to show you the development map of what's going on with money, income, and profit.com. As we go through here, I'm going to show you the curriculum. All right. That should be, that's published. I know for a fact that's published. Let's go here. There we go. All right, so this is your free stuff. Welcome to the first up your financial life. It's also on YouTube, the five checking account blueprint. All right, and we're getting into the course, new money habits that will make you financially independent. There are three stages to getting wealthy. Financial independence, the ability to earn more than enough money to take care of yourself without being tied to a set number of hours. And that's generally a side hustle or your own business. And then we're going to get into getting rich, which is 10 to 20 times the average yearly income. Uh, you're rich stage two and wealthy. Your money makes money and you don't work. You manage That's stage three. So we'll get into those. Uh, what is money? Debt to income. The real reason you're broke and struggle. There's this felonious statement that it doesn't matter how much you make. If you're only making twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars a year in 2019, you really don't have enough to save. You just don't unless you're living at home with parents or something else. You don't have a car. You you don't have enough money to save. You need to be at 50, 55, and this is something else, and we're going to talk about the fire movement. This is where a lot of these people are. I remember one girl saying the average income was 70 to 100K, perhaps for her circle, but nation, nation, nationwide, average income is 28 to 32K per single person a year. So there, there's a lot of confusion with that, but we'll talk about that. Um, why you can't afford the car you're driving, even 50 to 65K a year. Sweet 16, why and when you need to start saving 50 to 75% of your income. How to buy stuff, why my name brand kid. Short-term money, active or passive income. Long-term money, stores of value, not stock or crypto. Um, money, more money, why savings is not enough. Replace saving money with the real deal, managing money. Accelerated income, self-employment business owner and how to invest for more money. Never buy a stock unless it pays a dividend. Investment income for the future, not the next five years. So this is going to be this course right here. I'll be working on it today, tomorrow, this weekend. Should get it finished by next week and then we'll get move to phase two. For those of you who are not in Hustler undergrad, and once again, let me make this very plain. You don't have to buy this. Once I get this done and the second tier done, then we move into stage three, which will include this and the second tier. Then we'll start adding you guys to the course. You know, my assistant will reach out to you and there's a lot of good stuff that's coming down. We're going to get into the T-shirts. We're getting into a lot of stuff. So just a warm and heartfelt thanks for sticking it out 
but we are about to start cooking with gas. So what I'm going to do going forward is just work on one thing at a time and get it done because once we get to the stage, the third tier, that's going to be a monthly reoccurring revenue deal because you're going to get information every month and that's why you need to pay. And then for those of you who bought Hustle Undergrad, you'll get that even though you have a limited payment term because once you pay up all your tuition, you're done and you'll still have access to the course. You'll have access to the new updates, so on and so forth. And there are some people who are talking about um, access and they bought Hustlers Undergrad, Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills 2015. Um, I'm going to do something. I have no clue to what I'm going to do, but I will make something available. And this is one of the things my assistant will be working on. So there you have it. The links below to enroll it is a hundred bucks. I'll, I'll just go ahead and make that uh, one and done. <laughs> Maybe make it 75. And then uh, for those who want to pay over time, it's four monthly payments, uh, 25 bucks. If that's hurting your pockets, I can't help you. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, if you watch enough videos and start executing on some of this free stuff, you would actually be able to afford that. How about those apples? Well, anyway, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video.